Could we get you to play something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. All right, you. tell me about that song, Matteo. Well, uh, it's called Falcon Flight. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually one of my favorite songs from the album because uh, I wasn't really able to uh, li label them, you know? It's not rock, it's not jazz, so it was something new to me. And uh, I, I really like this song because he has, um, um, I, I think he has the right combination of, of a simple element and a complex one. And the simple element is the melody. It's basically everything is uh, in E flat. Mm -hmm. All the notes of the melody are. But the chords are a little bit different. And they're, they're not really related to each other. And I have this philosophy that if you don't know what to do with your chord progression, a sus chord will always help you. <laughs> so. <laughs> right. Really yeah. interesting chord, yeah. So I wanted to write something that had like a, uh, you know, complex chord progression, or at least interesting chord progression, let's say, but with a simple melody on top. So that's how Falcon Flight came out. I'd like to take a second to talk to you about this channel. This is actually Rick Beato too. I've had it since the beginning of my main channel, and many of you are not subscribed. As a matter of fact, 87% of the people that watch this channel regularly are not subscribed. So I encourage you to hit the subscribe button on this channel and on my main channel. This will help me get even more of my dream guests and help continue to grow both channels. Thank you. When you're playing over these tunes, what do you think about? Are you just you just play. Before I was thinking about don't screw up, don't screw up, don't screw up <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Uh, but usually, you know, when I'm playing with my trio, I just to, you know, try to live the moment a bit. You, you know, where you're having fun on the stage, people understand that and they kind of feel it. 
So I always try to have fun while I'm playing, and I, I have this philosophy, especially when I'm playing through the changes and maybe on complex things, that you know, thought is the enemy of flow, mm -hmm. and uh, I heard it from an exceptional drummer <laughs> called Vinny Polayuta, <laughs> and from an exceptional YouTube channel <laughs> called Rick Beat. <laughs> yeah, I think it was your interview, right? Yes, I remember Vinny said that, and I couldn't believe that he just yeah. came up with that instantly. Yeah. I said, talk about flow, and he said, thought is the enemy of flow. I was like, and I was, my mind was blown. Wow, that, that's like yeah. subtly like my philosophy. I, I want to be, you know. I kind of have the same mindset on improvisation, you know. The less you think, the more uh, you are spontaneous, you know. And actually, I like, you know, players that are maybe they do more mistakes, mm -hmm. but they are much more spontaneous rather than players that prepare everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, you know, there are not mistakes, but you are, can feel that it's not quite spontaneous as real improvisation, you know? I want to ask you about Alan Holdsworth. He came up kind of in passing. Tell me about Alan Holdsworth and is he somebody that was an influence on you? Yeah, but it, it, it was kind of a late influence, I would mm -hmm. say, because the first time I listened to him, I. I didn't really catch his music. I didn't really understand what was going on because it, I, I think it was too advanced for the time. I, and I, I was like 15 or something. I, I, and I was into the shred stuff like Malmsteen, Paul Gilbert, these kind of guys. Mm -hmm. And then Oswald came and, uh, you know, it didn't sound like a guitar. Uh, and th that's why it was so new to me. And actually, when I uh, start listening to Fusion, and I listen again to Alan, I said, oh, "Okay, I get that." It. Like, wow! And it was more mind blowing than the first time, actually, because I actually understood I understood what was going on. The songs like "Tokyo Dream" or "Devil Take the Hint Monster," Fusion masterpieces for me. So, yeah, Alan is one of the greats. Have you ever transcribed an Alan solo? Actually, I never learned an Alan solo from, you know... From start to from, finish, from right? From start to finish, yeah. Just because it was, you know, some of the vocabulary, you, you first of all need to understand harmonically what's going on. Yeah. Because they are not just standard, they're not like a bunch of 2 5 ones, no. you know? <laughs> it's a little bit more complicated, so you need to... Uh, when you try to study Alan, I think you need to study the song first mm -hmm. and the solo came second, you know, because y you first of all need to understand harmonically speaking what's going on. And most of the Alan songs are like harmonic explorations. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he explores a lot uh, the, you know, uh, Lydian dominant scale. Sometimes he's uh, uh, diminished. Uh, Sometimes uh, there's, there is this scale that I didn't really explore a lot, but Alan was a master to it. And it's the harmonic major scale. Yes. Oh, yeah. And Alan was using a lot of times. And it's something that is fairly new to me. And I have to say it's something I have to work on. How do you add vocabulary to your playing? Well, mostly it's listening. Mm -hmm. And it's listening to non-guitar players mm -hmm. sometimes because that's where you get like some of the unusual lines that I do, maybe. You know, I'm a big fan of Michael Brecker, and Michael Brecker is really hard to transcribe, you know? I, I try to implement some of, some of the sax lines into my improvisational playing, but it's really tough, especially for the visualization point of view. You get a lot of like symmetrical stuff that are not really easy to visualize on guitar. Yes. You know? Then I'm, I'm trying to Concentrate more also on the right te technique, not the rest stroke, but actually the free stroke, because mm -hmm. I think he has way more possibilities because I have my thumb available, you know. So I'm trying to transfer a lot of mm, more vocabulary on this technique because I, I, I have a, a lot of, uh, let's say, instinct with this rest stroke technique because I started like that. Right. So a lot of my, let's say, vocabulary, sometimes I think about line and I don't even know, I don't even notice that my hand is immediately like that. And maybe I wanted to play a line like that, but, you know, muscular memory kicks in and I'm trying to, you know, um, mm, use more my thumb on improvisational playing, basically, yeah.